Travis was almost awake one morning, but found himself in that not yet awake and not totally asleep realm. It felt good to float around in the bed while in this very relaxed state. He knew that he was not restricted by the fully obstructed realm environment while in this condition and wondered if he could send himself into a fully lucid dream state. He was indeed in an imaginary world but still somehow conscious of this condition, able to control what he was dreaming. This type of thinking gave him an idea. He had never been sailing in the tropical seas and he wondered what it would be like to be in the Bahamas. He enjoyed that idea, and so he willed his dream to take him there and immediately found himself sailing across the Gulf Stream on a small sailboat and entering the aquamarine colored waters of the Bahama Islands. This dream state was so vivid that it seemed that he could visualize things better than he was able to in his physical life. Even the scent of salt water and algae was a virtual perfume that he could almost taste, and the breeze was blowing a light mist from the ocean's small white caps onto his face. This was great. As he glanced around him, he saw two dolphins approaching him on his left. He was almost alarmed when he saw how large they were, but he sensed that they were projecting a very friendly attitude without actually doing anything self-evident and were certainly not a threat. While he was watching and enjoying the dolphins leaping around his sailing sloop, one of them swam towards the boat and sort of leaned over the side, looking up at him. Travis caught on pretty quick and said, Tiber, I didn't know you were that good a swimmer. And I also didn't know you could invade my dreams. At first, all Travis could hear was a squeak or a squawk, and he could see the dolphin's head bobbing up and down. Travis just glared at the porpoise and said, Really, Tiber? Still looking very much like a dolphin, Tiber the dolphin said, I thought you would really appreciate this form. Ahoy, Captain. Can I come aboard? I guess so. I didn't know we were going to have a lesson while I was still asleep and dreaming. But come aboard anyway, Professor. Thank you, my boy, and if you don't mind, I'll have my friend here hang around until we are finished. We are having a good time swimming around the coral reefs here in the Bahamas. Travis looked over towards the other dolphin and began laughing as the porpoise bounced his head up and down, and then leaped high out of the water, and doing a somersault while all the time emitting numerous squeaks and squawks. He then turned his head back to Tiber and said, This lesson is supposed to be all about sex right? He saw that Tiber was leaning back against the side of the upper cabin structure's wall. He had jammer-style lycra and spandex swim trunks on. To make the entire scene somewhat ludicrous, he was smoking a pipe. That's what you asked for last time, and that is why I scheduled it while you are dreaming. This is a perfect venue, as the possibility of having a wet dream is better if you are in the dream state while sailing on the ocean. Good grief! Do you have to bring everything down to its lowest depths? I thought that you being a high-minded spiritual character and all, that we would always take the high road, and here you are scraping along the bottom. Sorry about that, but I am nervous about having to teach a young man in the throes of an out-of-control testosterone-driven mentality, and that is way out of my comfort zone. Very funny. Can we now get on with the lesson before you force me to wake up? Okay. Here we go. Just what is it you want to know about sex? Are you concerned about it in this earthly existence or in the spiritual ones to come? Both. Well, forget about the spiritual zone as sex there doesn't have the same, shall we say, characteristics. Come to think of it, though, the pleasure that souls have in the transition realm while interacting is quite amazing and, in my opinion, much better than the sex you have here in this physical conflict realm. Why the physical conflict? Do you think having sex with another person is a conflict? To a degree. I use the term conflict because there are almost always two sides to those participating in a sexual encounter. They each have their own expectations regarding the quality of the relationship and the expected outcome of their interactions. The conflict may be very mild, pleasant, and exciting or end up being quite a battle. It can be terrible and wonderful, all dependent on the degree to which each person attempts to satisfy the other and meet their needs. To say that again, because it is important when two people are involved in a sexual act, they are, of course, attempting to satisfy their own desires and feelings. 
The degree to which it is a good or bad activity depends on the amount of sharing involved from both individuals. If only one partner is being satisfied, it is generally a bad act. And if one partner is totally in caring of what the other partner is experiencing, it is a terrible act and in many other cases can be defined as rape. Tiber stopped for a moment to see if Travis would say anything, but he didn't, so Tiber continued. Now we must understand that the decision to have sex is most often initiated by one of the people involved more than the other at any given time. This is quite natural because sex in the physical realm is generally influenced by hormones, habits, or intentions. Hormones are the most obvious influence as natural programming will want humans to procreate and therefore produces the urge to do so. Habits are also a stimulus because the body has a tendency to do what the body normally does. If you have sex every day or only on February 29th to celebrate leap year, that is a reason to initiate it. Or if your intention is only to create a baby, then that can be a good reason as well. There are also other reasons that you may come up with. And also, by the way, I am assuming that you know all about the moving parts of what we are talking about. Travis decided to ignore that and asked a question. I often wonder why, if encouraging babies was the primary reason that a sex drive was built into the human sexual system, why are there some divergent sexual interests evidenced such as homosexuality, bisexuality, and asexual tendencies and just plain fun? There is a lot of variation in those sexual drives and interests. That's a good question. The answer is that as important as reproduction might be, the primary reason we have been created by supreme consciousness is to have experiences and learn from them to develop spiritual growth. Not everyone wants, can, or should experience having and raising children in any given lifetime. It is a wonderful choice to make. And probably nothing provides a range of better life experiences than rearing a child. There is also an unlimited number of other kinds of experiences that a soul wants to deal with in their many lifetimes to achieve evolutionary growth. Perhaps they have already completed the reality of having children in other incarnations, and now want to learn from other options. All existences are valid in our quest for knowledge and spiritual growth and we should be open to having them. And remember, in most cases, each person has a sex drive regardless of what their life experiences are going to be. The most common human sexual makeup is to have a sexual attraction for the opposite gender. Still, in a significantly large segment, the attraction is for the same sex, and in fewer numbers for no attraction at all. It's all good and entirely up to the individual soul as to what direction they will be taking, regardless of what society or a specific culture deems acceptable. All this is most interesting. But why is it that we often feel a bit of guilt about having sexual thoughts and deeds? Here we are talking about society and its tendency to try to control everyone that is in their tribe. There should be no guilt about sexual feelings unless those emotions and actions are harmful or potentially harmful to yourself or others. One of the biggest guilts common to lay down on young people is self-gratification or masturbation. This is a perfectly natural activity and most helpful in allowing teenagers like yourself to make it through the adolescent years and into adulthood. I doubt if they could traverse those years without that kind of help. And even during adulthood, there are many occasions where sexual release without a partner is necessary and more than helpful. There is no reason for guilt when considering a healthy and positive form of sex of any kind. It is a proper tenet to suggest that any sexual activities between consenting adults are no concern of the law or anyone else. Travis thought about that and had another question to ask. What about sex in public? Is that okay? That depends entirely on the public you are talking about, and the answer applies to a whole host of other social subjects such as verbal utterances, nudity, mannerisms, spreading of germs, and of course sexual activities and many, many more things. In some cultures, 
Many of these activities would be tolerated quite well, and in others, they would want to hang you from the nearest tree limb. It is hard to live with many social restrictions, but it is up to that society to change them. Sometimes, most people feel that these things need changing, but society remains against open sex and nudity and other things. You just have to go along with them until you can get things changed. Tiber then looked into Travis's eyes and saw that they were not glazed over yet, so he continued. Now, remember that we are talking about normal urges and not addictions of any kind. Sex should be enjoyed but never to a degree where it controls a person's activities or lifestyle in any negative way. If you allow that to occur, you will find yourself physically and emotionally damaged in many ways. Still, in time you will most likely lose your interest in the very thing you found most appealing in the beginning. I remind you at this time of some very important advice. For almost any activity in this realm, the best advice is moderation in all things. I understand that. Thank you. You are basically telling me to learn to respect the sexual act and, most importantly, to respect the one that I am sharing the sexual act with, including myself. Right? Right. The rule is to respect and share. You don't have to love the partner you are with, but that is always the best if you do. But you should always care about that other person and attempt to make them as happy and satisfied as you can. This is actually something you should consider for all human activities. If you are talking or dining or playing with another individual, let them know that you are happy to be with them by paying attention to them. It is always a turn off to make any association all about you. This is all good advice, but getting back to having sex in the spiritual realms. Do you never do it? Such a one drag mind. Obviously, you don't procreate there because you don't have children in that realm, and you don't need a sexual. Physical release because you don't have a physical body or physical stuff that needs satisfaction. However, you do have a need to express your love for another individual soul quite often, and a type of spiritual merging occurs that is very electrifying and satisfying. You needn't worry that you will be doing without when you get there. As a matter of fact, it is one of the hardest things you will be leaving behind when you incarnate back into an obstructed realm for another lifetime. Thinking about that, I think I have to go back pretty soon. I thought you wanted to go play with your swim mate that is circling the boat and looking impatient. Oh, yes, I do, but I can actually do both at the same time. We spiritual entities are quite a CDC when it comes to sharing ourselves. We can be in many places at one time and share, share, share ourselves quite nicely. Interesting. Is there anything else you need to know about sex, or are you an expert now? I don't think so, but perhaps I need to have more practice to be convinced that I know it all. That's the way it works, my boy. I leave it up to your good judgment. Just don't harm yourself or anyone else. And with that, Tiber did a back roll off the side of the boat pipe and all. Then he morphed into the smiling porpoise as he joined his friend in the water. Tiber turned back to look at Travis and yelled. I love you. Travis yelled back. I love you too. See you later. And then Travis woke up in his bed. He thought to himself, I really love these Tiber talks. Was I right or wrong about this episode? Tiber gives some excellent advice, but more importantly, Travis listens and believes what he has heard. Perhaps some of you felt that this episode would have contained a bit more graphic sex talk, but that isn't what Tiber wanted to teach Travis. The subject of sex needed broader and, more importantly, relevant advice. It's more important to use respect with another person than it is any other factor. You can be sure that Tiber will give more good advice as the episodes continue. Episode number 7 will be all about habits, which is more complex a subject than you might think. Stay with us and find out for yourself. Please visit our website, theemeraldcrystal.com to see, read or hear more of our literary offerings. You may purchase our spiritual thriller novels, Quest for the Emerald Crystal Book Number 1, Spiritual Warriors in the Bahamas or Quest for the Emerald Crystal Book Number 2, Spiritual Warriors in Belize, and Quest for the Emerald Crystal Book Number 3, Spiritual Warriors in the Caribbean, within the website or on Amazon.com.